Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the second of two flying World War II B-29s is about to take to the skies. The FAA has established an interim policy to accelerate airspace authorization for certain commercial unmanned aircraft operators, and commercial crew launch to the International Space Station is getting closer. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited, I'm Ashley Hale. As we are wrapping up today's episode, our newsroom got a late-breaking story. Jim Campbell is here to report. Okay, let's get right down to business. We have a truly bizarre story to report. Apparently, in the case of the German Wings accident, Flight 9525 that went down in the French Alps the other day, well, there appears to be a new element to this, and the new term being used is crewicide, and it's horrific to say the least. Okay, let's go with what we think we know, and keep in mind that French authorities at this point are parceling out information in bits and pieces, which is not usually conducive to a good investigation, but we'll take what we can get. Right now, we understand the data retrieved from the cockpit voice recorder aboard the German Wings Airbus A320 Flight 9525 that went down in the French Alps indicates that the captain had been locked out of the cockpit before the airplane impacted terrain. Senior French military officials involved in the investigation initially said there had been a light knocking on the door when the captain tried to re-enter. He requested access thereafter from the first officer. There was a light knocking on the door, more insistent knocking, and eventually shouting. Eventually, the captain was reportedly trying to break through the reinforced cockpit door when the accident occurred. There was apparently never any answer from the first officer, who was still, of course, in the cockpit. Officials say it was unclear why the pilot had left the cockpit, but, quote, what is sure is that at the end of the flight, the other pilot is alone and does not open the door, unquote. The plane impacted terrain with enough speed to cause it to disintegrate. All 149 people on board, including three Americans, were fatally injured. The chief Marseille prosecutor in the investigation said it was clear that the aircraft was intentionally flown into the ground. Prosecutor Bryce Robbins said it appeared the co-pilot's intention was to, quote, destroy the aircraft, unquote. Robin said that human breathing could be heard on the CVR up until the impact and that, quote, therefore the pilot was alive, unquote. We also understand that the breathing was fairly routine and uniform throughout the flight up until the moment of impact. The cockpit on the Airbus A320 can be locked from the inside in such a way that it disables the access keypad on the outside for up to five minutes, according to Airbus training officials. Without a doubt, this is going to change how the airlines and security are conducted in the future. Of course, this is an international operation. They don't necessarily follow the same regs that we see here in the States. And there is some variance in cockpit training and cockpit uh, security procedures involved here that will no doubt undergo extreme scrutiny in the days ahead. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell, and we will keep you up to date. Seventy years ago this week, in 1945, a B-29, later named Doc, rolled off the assembly line at Boeing and was delivered to the U.S. Army Air Forces. That same aircraft was rolled out and delivered again on the 70th anniversary of its initial delivery in commemoration of its restoration and progress back towards flying condition. Jeff Turner, chairman of Doc's Friends, said, quote, Many of us, especially our dedicated volunteers, have waited a very long time to see this day because it means Doc is that much closer to being ready to fly again, end quote. Part of a squadron of eight World War II-era B-29s named for Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Doc was eventually decommissioned in 1956. On track to fly later this year, Doc will be one of only two restored B-29s in flying condition. The restoration of Doc to flying condition has taken about 15 years. After the break, private industry rockets for crew launch to the space station are in final assembly. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables. 
cuts down cockpit cable clutter and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to support Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The first Atlas V rockets are in final assembly for testing and preparation for use to launch a crew to the International Space Station. A precursor flight without crew is part of the final development work Boeing is completing with NASA's Commercial Crew Program to certify a new crew transportation system for low Earth orbit. The factory is building pieces of the rocket that is unique to the CST-100 Atlas V stack that will be used in the testing regimen. Manufacturing has also begun for the fuel and oxygen tanks of the Centaur upper stage that will provide the final push to get the CST-100 and its crews into Earth orbit. Although still about two years away, the flight tests are close enough to prompt excitement and ramp up anticipation almost daily at the Atlas V assembly hall. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero community update, highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. It all started when Dr. Peter Diamandis had a dream of providing a prize to urge private businesses to find a way into space. His prize became funded by the Ansari family and the Ansari X Prize Challenge teams from around the world to build a reliable, reusable, privately financed manned spaceship capable of carrying three people to 100 kilometers above the Earth's surface twice within two weeks. The prize was awarded in 2004 and along with it, a brand new private space industry was launched. For a detailed account of the original Ansari X Prize that led to private industry's first flight into space, be sure to read Jim Campbell's book, Beyond the Blue. The original Ansari X Prize has turned into a foundation that now sponsors numerous X Prize endeavors. The winning of the competition itself is interesting and compelling. These X Prize projects must meet a number of criteria, not the least of which is to be bold and audacious and to shoot for a goal that has yet to be a success. The prize should inspire hope through a vision of a better future, or winning teams are the proof that the world's seemingly impossible problems can be solved. After these messages, the FAA comes up with an interim policy for UAS operation. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we've summarized some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The FAA has established an interim policy to accelerate airspace authorization 
for certain commercial unmanned aircraft operators. The new policy bridges the gap between the past process and future operations after the proposed small UAS rule is published. A new report says U.S. airports need an estimated $75.7 billion in infrastructure investment through 2019 to accommodate customer growth, rehabilitate existing facilities, and support aircraft innovation. The report admonishes that the U.S. must move beyond the status quo. A hearing of the Aviation Subcommittee will examine options for reforming air traffic control operations in the U.S. transportation system. They say FAA initiatives intended to modernize the system have not achieved that goal. A more powerful Falcon 9 rocket is headed for space this summer. SpaceX says the upgraded Falcon 9 will be about 30% more powerful than the current version. The new booster has not yet been named by the company. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's move on to the rest of the news. The Airline Pilots Association International expresses concern over the safety of integrating UAS operation into the national airspace system. ALPA President Captain Tim Canole issued a statement this week after submitting official comments for the U.S. Senate Commerce Committee on Aviation Operations Safety and Security Hearing on key considerations regarding unmanned aircraft systems. The statement read in part, quote, ALPA recognizes the societal and economic benefits of employing this technology to perform a wide variety of tasks more efficiently in a more environmentally responsible manner and potentially more safely than the same task performed with conventional aircraft. However, it is vitally important that the pressure to capitalize on the technology not lead to an incomplete safety analysis of the aircraft and operators." End quote. Well, that's our program for Thursday, March 26th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside our normal deadlines. Please join us in a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.